The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Hi everybody, we're back. Welcome to theCUBE. This is EMC World 2014, the live Silicon Angle, the CUBE production. Uh, we have been here all week, three days of nonstop coverage. I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Frick. Dr. KK Krishna Kumar is here, and he is the Vice President and Chief Architect at EMC IT. Relatively new role, you told me off camera, five years right? you've been in this, in this position. That's Welcome right. to theCUBE, thanks so much for taking Thank some time. Thank you, pleasure to be here. So talk about that role a little bit. How did it come about and, and, and what's your focus? I think the role came about because uh, we were uh, starting to do a lot of things in the architecture side, which is very fundamental to how we uh, put systems out there. And uh, you know what was noticed was uh, we were doing things on the application front, on the infrastructure front, on the security front, with no real correlation between what was going on. So the role was created to make it all come together. Uh, so I've been leading up the enterprise architecture function since then. And in addition, I, I lead the Office of Architecture and Innovation, meaning that we've been focusing on how do we look at new things uh, and, and bring them to bear, incubate them, bring them to bear. And so examples of that are the mobility program in IT, or uh, which is EMC-wide, but of course we incubate it first. Uh, another example is master data management, another one is data science, and so on and so forth. You know? So, I mean, you're essentially CTO, right? That's CTO, fair, yeah. Right? So you uh, were uh, uh, involved in the CTO conference uh, here this week. That's right. What was the CTO conference all about? This is something that, uh, you know, we actually started up, this is the first time uh, of its kind, so first one of its kind that we hosted up here. Uh, we call it the Chief Architect slash CTO Forum. Uh, and this is equivalent to the CIO Forum. The reason we started it up was uh, we, we said that there are uh, enough tracks going on for regular architects up in, uh, you know, EMC world, uh, but things are getting so converged, uh, things are uh, you know, getting more focused on applications, the uh, infrastructure, the middleware, all of that. So he said, how do we bring it all together? So Job Simon, who's my counterpart at uh, VMware, uh, is the chief architect there, and he and I said, hey, let's create something, let's start it off at EMC World, uh, invite a bunch of uh, CTOs uh, to it, let's share our thoughts, and then we'll extend it through VMworld, and it was a great success yesterday. We had about 20 uh, CTOs from different organizations come, and. We, we had a, a lot of fun, you know. Now you report to the CIO, is that That's correct? That's right, Vic Bagat, uh, who's right. the CIO. And, and prior to that, uh, uh, Sanjay Merchandani. That's correct, yeah. Uh, who's a CUBE alum, we've had him on many, many times. <laughs> yeah, so when you came in five years ago, EMC IT has tr transformed dramatically. That's I mean, absolutely I remember, right. I remember that you, when you came in, the really virtualization was, was probably minimal. That's right. Joe Tucci put the stake in the ground and said, we will be fully virtualized by I forget what date. Absolutely. And uh, <laughs> I was skeptical. Uh, and uh, uh, but but it's it's happened or is happening, right? Um, talk about when you first came in. Where did you start? I mean, obviously, you want to take an inventory, understand the application That's portfolio, right. understand the infrastructure, the people, the process. So, talk about where you started, and where you've helped take EMC IT over the last five years. At the, at the time that I came in, obviously, virtualization was well here, except that the number of uh, things that were already virtualized was uh, sort of on the lower side. Yeah. Uh, so the infrastructure approach to it had been established. So one of the things that uh, we started up was uh, uh, we, we did have many of the applications which were new going onto the virtual platform. So we had a virtual first approach at that time. But we also ran uh, what we call uh, sweep the floor to take existing applications and move them onto virtualized infrastructure as well. That was the first foray we, we, we had into going beyond the IT-owned applications into more mission-critical applications. So one of the first things we did was uh, virtualize our uh, you know, customer-facing platform, PowerLink, at that time. Uh, all, and, and, and one of the things we also did was uh, we left the databases to the very end, because those are typically the, the worst one to virtualize. Uh, even though now, at, the, at this point in time, we virtualize much of the database footprint. Uh, but we started doing those. Uh, we started doing the web and the application server tiers. Uh, and, and so then it became more of an activity where we knew what we were doing. It was more of cranking the wheel and we do more and more P2Es, right? But our focus started to change uh, based on the fact that, hey, we were already at about maybe 75% virtualized at some point of time. Uh, we said that this does not uh, necessarily deliver all the value that it can to the business. Uh, we started looking at business agility. We started saying that, hey, uh, it still takes a lot of time to to produce a single VM. So we, that's when it started to impact the process and the people aspect of it. 
so we said we should change our operating model. So we started looking at processes that we had to uh, generate VMs uh, or provision VMs and uh, we looked at 33 steps and you know the number of handoffs that were happening between different groups. Uh, so one of the things that we did was we put many of the groups together in this infrastructure area, server, storage, uh, backup recovery and all of that into a single uh, group called uh, private cloud infrastructure group at that time. Uh, but we also started looking at the overall uh, process of getting the agility to the business, uh, and we started looking at IT as a service. Saying that, why are we in the, in the business of uh, being in the middle of generating VMs? We should be a la, uh, let's may, let me say it, uh, AWS, and saying that we should be able to go uh, to a, a self-service portal, click, 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 at the end of it, you know, the VMs should be up and running. And so that's the, that's the model that we started on. So we started defining a track to say, what is our service catalog going to be? What are our services? How do we package them up? What is the chargeback model? And so on and so forth. So we've been on this journey for about three years or so on IT as a service. So that's our second phase of transformation, if you will, after the virtualization of the infrastructure. Uh, now we are on to, okay, yeah, you can build a cloud, operate it like a cloud, but uh, how about applications that need to run on it in a very optimized and cloud-aware manner? And that's where we really get to the third platform application. So are they cloud aware, cloud optimized? Are they mobile? Everybody wants to run uh, the business. Uh, David Colden wants to run the business from his iPad, right? right. Uh, what about social, what about mobile, what about uh, big data? And so that's, those are things we expanded into once we got past the couple of uh, you know, infrastructure and uh, the operating model. Itself. So one of those services that you uh, began offering was, was file sharing, uh, right. dealing with unstructured data. Uh, of course, EMC bought Simplicity, but prior to that, you know, you had file sharing services, whether it's you know, Box.net or you know, Box, and, and and so, and you guys are very particular about what you'll let behind the firewall That's right. EMC IT. Right. We know that. <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> so for a long time, you couldn't get the cube behind your firewall. You got to get it whitelisted. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, but but talk about that a, a little bit. So sure. what, what everybody, you know, the business people want ways to share. That's correct. Uh, That's so correct. So what were you doing before, and, and yeah. how did Simplicity change that? We we had them I in for a collaboration perspective. Uh, obviously, uh, there was the notion of consumerization of IT that was happening widespread, right? People outside the workplace could share many many things easily, but come into IT or come into EMC and hey, you have e room here and uh, some SharePoint site there and this and that, uh, and. In the end, even though people were using those tools, it was always much more uh, uh, oriented on a server-based platform, right? Meaning that, hey, you drop files into a certain place, and then you can go and access it, yes, with your browser and stuff like that. But it is not the seamless way in which you come in and I use diff different devices. Uh, so for instance, if I had an iPhone on an iPad, uh, and I wanted to access something on the, on the network, which is uh, in a SharePoint site or an eRoom, it, it always meant that they had to log in, you know, either use VPN or some other means, use uh, you know, uh, VDI as a mechanism to get in, and that was a very clunky way of getting to it. So we said, hey, we need to be looking at other mechanisms of doing that, um, and you know, uh, came along Simplicity. Uh, one of the things I should say is uh, Simplicity at that time at least looked as, as uh, good as uh, Dropbox or Box.net to us. I mean, meaning that it had uh, many of the consumer level features that uh, you would expect, but not the enterprise level features. So is it secure enough was one in, in uh, it was still running in the uh, AWS cloud at that time, and we were saying, hey, a lot of people are sharing uh, very uh, uh, you know, sensitive information on, on uh, file shares and so on and so forth. Would we be comfortable putting that stuff out in a public cloud kind of setting? That was one. But at the same time, we didn't want to stop the flow of information and the innovation that could happen with it. So we said, let's work with the Simplicity team. We, we absolutely are committed to bringing this platform in, but let's work with them to actually add in the enterprise features. And you know, obviously we were not the engineers building the product, but we worked with them. And so the, the things we started looking at was, okay, how, how can you first of all have uh, an on-premise implementation? And so we said, uh, could you put this on an Atmos? Could you put this on an Isilon, Isilon kind of a footprint? And so they started uh, looking at that and, and, and bringing that onto a, a platform. So today, our rollout of Simplicity is all based on an on-premise kind of a model. Uh, and, and so where the data, it's definitely stored on-premise for us. Uh, can we extend it out to uh, you know, a hybrid cloud model? Absolutely, because we run in that mode today because you know, the initial uh, you know, free accounts that people had on Simplicity are still out on Amazon, but we're bringing them and converting them to come onto our, our platform, our internal platform today. Uh, uh, aspects of uh, you know, security, of course, and we worked with the team to say that, okay, uh, uh, th there is a notion of uh, authentication initially, 
how does it get integrated with our RSA two-factor when you sign on initially, as an example. But then subsequently, when you're actually using the product, not everybody wants to, every time you use the product, nobody wants to sign on with a two-factor key fob authentication. So we said, how can we enable that uh, to happen much more seamlessly? And so that, that happened, we worked with the team on that. Uh, the third area is around, okay, here I am, I want to share not only within the enterprise, but outside of the enterprise. I'm sending links over to people. Now, the links can point to very sensitive data as well. And so, how can we actually enable it with passwords? And so, at least a, a mechanism by which we can have a notion of uh, you know, uh, more security and more secure access to it. And so, that's what we worked with the team on. Our initial and final goal on this was to say, let's enable all of the business and the agility that it brings and the productivity that this kind of a tool brings, but at the same time, preserve what you would consider as assets, which are very core to EMC. I believe we've done that, and thanks to the Simplicity team, we're working uh, so closely with us and, and enabling the, the entire enterprise. At this point of time, we are pretty much on, a, on about 40, 40, 45,000 almost people. It's all of EMC rolled onto it, and uh, more people are getting rolled onto it. Yeah. So KK, that was an interesting strategy because we we talk about consumerization of IT all the yeah, time and yeah. expected behavior of applications based on what people do, at, you know, on their phones and other That's things. Right. But you guys, rather than just look at it and then try to build from scratch something to replicate, actually taking what was there and then trying to wrap it and really integrate it back into an enterprise-centric environment. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know that is the model that we are, uh, you know, as the very core to our strategy today, right? Before EMC IT could have probably said, hey, I don't want shadow IT, I don't want uh, other apps coming in, we got to build it all. Even if we are integrating with others, we used to have uh, very, uh, c you know, very restrictive kinds of mechanisms. We've, we've seen, you know, we've smelled the coffee, if you will, right? right we've right. seen that everybody wants to bring their uh, home experience into the workplace. We want to enable that as much as possible, but very central to it is abso absolutely keeping the security, the integrity uh, of everything that we own. And so you'd find that, obviously, with Simplicity, we've worked with the uh, engineering team to do that. At the same way, we are working with uh, you know even the business line of business teams to say that hey, if you want to build an application yourself, including mobile applications, let's enable you to do it. But at the same time, we'll give you a platform where we put a guardrail, set of guardrails on it. Stay within the guardrails. We'll enable you to do it, including big data access, all of that. If you want to do analytics by yourself, do that. But even then, yeah. your guardrails are kind of wrapped around at a macro level that once you get inside, That's right. then it kind of operates as if you That's were right. just on the, the native internet. The focus is absolutely agility, the productivity, which you know, in, in the world of uh, IT before, we used to kill, right? People are just yeah, pretty right. amazed and uh, you know. That's to, way too simple, make, yeah, it, make it harder. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So we've, we've definitely turned the corner on that. You'd see that many of our services, especially in the context of IT as a service, is all about Yes, we will preserve the what the enterprise wants as integrity and availability and all that. The robust industrialized operation is very, very, very core. But we've seen uh, the fact that lines of businesses want the agility and the choice. And that's how we are enabling with different solutions how you can do this, you know? So we just got a couple minutes left. I okay. wanted to ask you about uh, business agility yes. uh, for the third platform, transforming into a software-defined data center. So you're giving some talks. Absolutely. What's all about? What's the main message? The premise? Talk about that a little bit. I think you know the third platform obviously has been uh, you know uh, broadly defined as the integration of cloud, big data, social, and mobile. Uh, we are, we are all about uh, enabling that. I mean, clearly, as uh, from within IT, we've we've enjoyed a, a very uh, big uh, footprint in all of those, right? By themselves, cloud clearly we play a big part, and we've we've ninety four percent virtualized as far as the uh, virtualization platform goes but we've enabled very much a hybrid cloud within EMC IT, right? Uh, the second aspect of it is uh, mobile. We've run a mobility program for the last three and a half years. We, uh, much like I was saying earlier, we operate on a model where we're saying we will provide an environment where we can build apps within IT for business needs, but if the business wants to build apps, we will support that as part of the platform as well. The third area is uh, you know, big data. We have a very robust big data program, which we've been talking about. Uh, again, the notion of initially our strategy has been about consolidate, uh, liberate, and close the loop. The consolidate was, let's get all the data together and put that into one place. But then we were accused of holding the data hostage and you know all of the uh, things that are company. It's it. a balance. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. But we said, that's where the liberate came into play, right? We said, we wanted to give the guardrails for the business to come in, work on the data by themselves if they want to actually have different analytics done on that. We created a business analytics as a service platform. 
And so these are virtual workspaces which the business can come and do ad hoc querying on, data mining on, and so on. And we, we obviously provide the services if they want us to help us do that. We provide uh, reporting services, we provide data quality services, all the way up to data science services. So, you know, we on a consulting basis. So it's not that we are the only people who can do that. They can get the platform and then they are off and running by themselves. If they want, they can bring us so into this the This is part of your service catalog. Absolutely, okay, absolutely. So, and so you, you guys are really moving aggressively in that service very catalog much, direction. Very much, very much. What do you call the file sharing, collaboration, simplicity service? What this is, is part called? of the collaboration uh, yeah. taxonomy, yeah. and absolutely it's what is called sync and share. So okay, it's, it's, so it's called sync and share, yeah. and you got, a, you got a price for that? Is that how it works? Is there, there is a price, there is a price. It's, it's a per uh, you know, user charge on, it's a seat yeah. charge uh, that is being charged back to the business units. So you got a brochure? Uh, Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. I mean, and that is the whole notion of a service catalog. Absolutely. Right? I mean, we got to have a brochure. Yeah. In many cases, we also try to compare us, uh, ourselves to what we call the competition, right? Because really, we want to be the provider of choice. We may not be the, let's say, the m most inexpensive provider, but uh, quality of service-wise and all that. So we compare ourselves to the typical Amazons and Dropbox. In this case, at least think and share Dropbox and. So you're the value play. Absolutely the value. Love play. it. Absolutely. Yep. KK, really thanks for coming on theCUBE. Awesome story. I'll give you a last word. The bumper sticker, when you're leaving Las Vegas in the back of your car, EMC World 2014, what's it say? It says, uh, for us, if you had to give a plug for IT, we say EMC IT is a trusted advisor and enabler of choice for all of EMC. If you say for EMC World, the event is one of the best events I've ever attended. And I'm just enthused, I talked about the CTO forum, we had a fantastic start to it. Amazing, amazing uh, you know, uh, conference, and the people we've met here are fantastic. Thank you. They can do it, you can too, so uh, that's <laughs> Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Thank you very much, KK, really appreciate great. you coming on Thank the Thank you Cubes. very much, Dave. Great to meet you. Thank you, Jeff. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be, be back here. with our next guest. Uh, this is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Day three, EMC World 2014. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. Thank you.